like Greg Harrell again. Uh, I have a bus waiting for me. So this is the last recording I'm gonna to make tonight before I run off, uh, continuing the theme of settings in Vim. So this one, format options, has existed for quite a while. Uh, the ability to use J as a format specifier is a new thing. Uh, what it does is, as this comment indicates, it enables you to join lines um, in a comment away away. So if I go here and do one, two, three, you'll notice that I can use Shift J to join these lines, and that's wonderful. But I can also use it to join the comments, but it, note that it's a smart join. It's not just dumbly mashing the lines together, it's actually deleting the, the leading quote mark that introduces the comment. And that is enabled by Format Options J, which has existed since Vim 7.3, patch 541, uh, which is why we have this guard here to confirm that it's available. Because if you try to set format options on something uh, that, on a version of Vim that doesn't know this, you're gonna get some error. So, illegal character, like that. Um, another format options one is N, which enables numbered lists to be indented. So I might hit one dot, foo, hit enter. The next line will be indented. Um, and you can find out more about these in the help under format options. Uh, down here, format table, there's a big long list of these things around the different letters you can pass to format options. Um, here's the correct setting for font. Source code pro light in this size, of course, in the GUI. Uh, I never use MacVim anymore, but this has been in here for a while. It doesn't, certainly doesn't hurt to have it, but I turn off the toolbar because I want it to look pretty much the same everywhere that I use it. Hidden, this is a huge setting. Without this, Using Vim is just insane. You must have this setting. Basically, enables you to hide a buffer without having saved the changes to it, uh, which is wonderful, because otherwise you'll be constantly interrupted to save changes. You don't have to worry about buffers being having unsaved changes when they're hidden, because Vim's not gonna crash on you, and it's gonna be fine, right? So just let it hide the buffer. Um, finally, there's highlight which allows you to set syntax highlight groups to change the color of specific elements of the UI. And this is another one where, uh, if we look at comma highlight, not the other highlight, the colon highlight, you see all these different uh, default colors and the different things that can be used or targeted in this way. And um, the ones that I'm specifically overriding, probably the most noticeable one here is the line number one. You notice here on the left, the line number kind of stands out a little bit, which is pretty nice when you, when you have both relative line numbers and number turned on like I do, um, just to make that current line stand out a bit. Um, last status, always show the status line. Off the top of my head, I can't actually remember why it wouldn't ever be shown, but I've got it in there. Lazy redraw makes macros go a little bit faster, which sadly actually matters, even though it's 2016 and we have computers which supposedly have been obeying Moore's law for like decades now. Uh, line break, uh, I actually don't know what this does despite my comment here, so I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader uh, to look up in the help line break and what that does. Um, and finally, the last thing I'm going to look at before I go are these list chars. Uh, Vim comes with a reasonable default set of list chars, but I've picked some nice Unicode glyphs that show up for things like uh, tabs. So if I hit tab here, um, I've got a little triangle and a kind of ellipsis thing. Um, and I've also got uh, trailing white space is going to be highlighted like that. Um, and non-breaking space, I can't remember how you type one of these, but it's really easy to do it without meaning to. And if it's invisible, you're going to have this non-ASCII character in your file. I think it might be something like option space. There you go, option space. Really good to actually see that stand out instead of have it sitting there insidiously. Um, and the only other thing that I would point out here is sometimes people want to know what these are. Um, so I've always been in the habit of like naming the Unicode co character or code point, I should say, um, that I'm using and putting the UTF-8 and <coughs> Unicode like UTF-16 or whatever that is, um, code point number so that people can copy it and look it up or whatever. Um, so that's all I've got today on the subject of settings. I'm going to continue this probably tomorrow or soon after. Um, in the meantime, I encourage you to go off and do some research and some dot file borrowing and stealing. Um, and thanks for watching.